You may be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. This is a case of King versus Porter. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Miss King, you are here to prove to your on again, off again boyfriend, Mr. Porter, that your three year old son, Kylan, is his biological child. You say his denial has destroyed your relationship and you need today's results to set the record straight. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Porter, you state that you have always wanted kids but believe you are medically unable to father children and therefore Kylan is not your biological son. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. King, describe the current status of your relationship with Mr. Porter and why today's results are so important. Me and George at the moment are co-parenting. The reason why I want him to, the reason why he is the father of my son is because I just know that he's the father. Um, oh. I'm 100% sure he's the only person that I've that been with. That sounds scientific. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's the only person that I've been with and my son deserves to have a father listed on his birth certificate. And so you feel like he isn't stepping up? Yes. No, he's not. Are you not stepping up, Mr. Porter? It's not the fact that I'm not stepping up. It's just the fact that I have doubt in my mind if I'm the father. So when we was together, we was, you know, had our problems off and on. And um, when we broke up, I went back to New York. You know, that's... And I was dating someone else at the time. And then when we came back down here from New York, the female I was talking to at the time and Miss King, they were exchanging text messages between each other. And Celicia told the other female that uh, she was pregnant. And um, when I found out, I went to Celicia myself. I said, are you pregnant? She said, yes, she was. I said, okay. So I decided to rekindle our relationship due to the fact that it might be my child. So wait, I want to understand what's happening in this relationship, just to be clear. So you all were in a relationship. Right. So at some point, you break up. Yes, Your Honor. When you break up, you say you go back to New York. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor. When you go to New York, you get a new girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. And then what happens when you find out you're pregnant, Miss King? I told him that I was pregnant, but I really wasn't pregnant. Oh! oh. Now, all right, Mr. Porter. So then Miss King admits she lied and said she was pregnant. What happens? She tells you you're well, pregnant. What happens? She, at the time, she told me she was pregnant. So I believed her. Decided, because I didn't have my father in my life, I decided I'm going to step up to the plate regardless. So I was there throughout the whole everything. But maybe about a month after her telling me she was pregnant, she walked in the room with a pregnancy test and she was just waving it around like she was pregnant. Um, so I'm like, I was confused. Then I started to think, like, how you pregnant? You know, like, if, if a month went by and you now pregnant, I was confused, like, I can't be the father. Like, that don't make no sense. That right there started off my doubt, like, hold up. So you thought she had been with another guy yeah. and was really trying to pin the baby on you right, because or I, either trap you with this not baby because she wanted case. to stay with you. Right, right. When that's I, when, not the when case. I, when I that found is not out. the case. The case is the fact that I, when we first started dating, I just knew that I wanted to be with him. He was the genuine type. When I seen him with someone else, it's just like, that's supposed to be us. That's not supposed to be y'all. So I told him I was pregnant and eventually I was going to tell him that I wasn't pregnant, but during that time that I was going to tell him that I, was, that I wasn't pregnant, I actually found out that I was pregnant. Because you were really trying to get pregnant because you knew I you had lied. I basically tried to get Go pregnant. Go on, just yeah. tell the truth, girl. We already know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> you worked real hard at that. Yeah. Because you had already lied. Yeah. Okay, so, so then you were pregnant, but he doesn't believe that. No, he doesn't believe it. How you pregnant? But you didn't even know I was lying about my pregnancy until recently. I just came out clear and told you I even lied about being pregnant during right. that time. Oh. Right. But... But you did let him know that you lied. I, I mean, did. once you lie, that erodes the trust. When, once you lie and someone catches you in a lie, everything you say, you look and going, is he lying? Is she lying? That's just how it right. works. That's what trust is but about. She told me last night that she was... When we broke up around the time she was pregnant, like, when we broke up, she was messing with someone else. You know what I mean? And she, I just found And that's out. because he was so still just dealing with last other night, she dropped the bomb... Right. ...and said... That when you pregnant. were off with the other girl... Right. ...she was messing with somebody else. Correct, correct. So, sounds like she was coming clean before she got to court, right, Jerome? That's absolutely true. Look, it's gonna all come out here. I always say, if it don't come out in the wash, it's coming out in the dry... Yep. ...or it's coming out in paternity court. Yes, right. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
So, Miss King, you were with another guy? I was, because when I found out that he was still dating her, he would sometimes, like, break up with me and decide, like, I don't want to be with you anymore. Just pick fine, like, little, um, little scenarios to pick over to say that he doesn't want to be with me so that he can go back to the other girl. So, when he would do that, I would go back and I would talk to my past relationship, like... But you told Mr. Porter he's the biological father of Kylan. Yeah. But you're admitting you were sleeping with somebody else because you were on the tit-for-tat track. Yeah. Every time he went over to his other person, you'd go back to your old person. Yes. Okay, Miss King, you doing too much. Yes. <laughs> I mean, now, right now... I mean, Mr. Porter is standing over here, and, I mean, nobody's perfect, but he's at least being a stand-up guy. And I talking do about I'm, that I'm wrong. Oh, oh, on so many levels. That goes to further my doubt. I was... <laughs> you know, like... Exactly. Did you ever tell any other man that they potentially could be the father? No. George was the only person that was sleeping around around the time that I got pregnant. Oh. The whole time, like, the whole time, like, when she was pregnant, like, in, in the hospital, you know, giving birth to her, to Kylan, she, you know, she was, like, you could say drained, tired, you know, so she went to sleep. And when she went to sleep, her phone started to go off. So I say, you know, I'm a curious guy, you know? Why my, you know, why my, why my... Curious. Something like that. I'm like, why my... Curious you know, George. That's what they call me sometimes. <laughs> that's what they curious call me. Curious George Porter. So, so what um, did you do, Mr. So Porter? I grabbed the phone... And um, I looked, I seen some text messages between her and another guy. So that right there was like... But why were you going through my phone? We're not together. So wait a minute. This is a picture of you in the hospital. Correct. When he holding... was first born. When he was first born, I was the first one to hold him. You look just like a dad holding their beautiful newborn baby. But what were you thinking? If he was mine. Like, the... That's heartbreaking. I, the whole time, like... I was telling her that I didn't believe he was mine. As I presented to the courtroom, I have text messages showing of what her and the fellow was talking about before and this picture And you submitted took those text messages yes, ma to the court? Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's take a look. This is your recollection of the text exchange. Ms. King writes, in the hospital, about to have the baby. The other man responds, cool, is George signing the birth certificate? Ms. King responds, no, he doesn't want to be responsible. Other man says, I will sign the birth certificate. Oh. Ms. King says, okay, great. It was just a joke. It was just a joke. It was just a joke? Yes. If any man read those text messages... And truth be told, when you're in a real relationship, he should have been able to have your phone in hand so he can say, look, baby's almost here. We doing this. This is it. I'm sending pictures as soon as I get it. Like, to me, you got this man just around trying to be a stand-up guy for a child he really doesn't know is his. And he has good reason not to. You gave it to him. <laughs> what are you feeling in this moment? Because my son deserves to have a father. I agree. But it's not the father you choose because it's the person you want to be the father. It's the father that truly is his biological father. <laughs> now, you can, of course have father figures. People can step in and play the role of dad. But I know what you're saying. You say you want your son to have his biological father, but what you're testifying to is you basically have just decided it's Mr. Porter. And that's not I how it works. I know George is the father. Your Honor, she's told me that she trapped me with Kylie. Oh! I same have token. proof that he's the father. My son is actually a little vertically challenged. I have a chart that I created. Would you like me to show it to you? All right. Please step up to the podium and explain your exhibit to the court. As you can see, the average male is actually 5'9". George is 5'2". Each time that I take my son to the, the doctor to get his wellness checks, he actually falls between the lower percentile of height-wise. The average child is 3'2", through 3'5". My son is 3 feet. 
me and George both are short, so it's guaranteed that my son is going to be short. Is that what you walked over here to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just say that that's a little bit of evidence, right? Yes. The truth is, you could have had sex with another short man. Yeah. If you want to rely on short. Your Honor, uh, at the same token, I have a um, medical problem. And um, I presented it to the court. Uh, when I was a, a child, I was diagnosed with the second highest case of lead poisoning in the state of New York. Really? Right. And I'm 26 right now, and uh, I have never had any children in, at all until this situation. So I, I was confused at the same time. Because that I have you been... believe the lead poisoning... Right affected your ability... To have children. To have children. Yes, ma'am. You actually submitted... Yeah, I submitted the article. Some research to the court that says lead may be the cause of 20% of unexplained male infertility cases. Experts found evidence that low-level lead exposure from contaminants may damage sperm and contribute to male infertility. Yes, ma'am. Oh. So you've done your research. Yes, ma'am. And I understand that because of this medical issue, you probably have been concerned about this throughout yeah. your life. Yes, yes. Because I've wanted children for a while. I wanted children. He smiles when I walk into the room. He, you know, his face lights up. You know, so, like I said, I just want to know for sure that he's mine or not. You know and that's I mean? understandable. But one thing that interested me, and I will say your research was fascinating. Right. And I'd like to learn more about the effects of lead poisoning. So I'm calling on uh, Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Jerome, will you please escort the doctor into the courtroom? Yes. I have a few questions for her. Hello, doctor. Hi. Have you go up to the witness stand? Watch your step. Hi, Dr. Brown Parks. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us again. We're here discussing the paternity of baby Kylan. And I have a question. Mr. Porter testified that he suffered from one of the highest cases of lead poisoning in the state of New York, yes, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Since Mr. Porter was diagnosed as a child, how likely that this diagnosis still would affect, in his adulthood, his ability to father a child? So, since I'm assuming that you are no longer at a toxic level, um, it wouldn't affect the sperm shape or mobility, but because you're developing as a child and that genital tract is forming during that lead exposure, you could mess with not only the structure of what's there, but also the hormonal path that leads to producing sperm after puberty. Which would then extend into adulthood. So even though his levels may be safe, low, or non-existent now, right. the damage could have already been done the damage could have been done as a young child. Wow. But is it, is it definitive? Meaning, is it still possible he could have fathered a child? It is absolutely possible as well. Okay. So after hearing Dr. Brown Park's testimony, Mr. Porter, do you feel differently about your potential? No, ma'am, I don't. I still feel the same way. I just need to know for sure if he's mine or not, you know? I understand. And... I have those results for you. Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. In the case of King versus Porter, when it comes to three-year-old Kylan Porter, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Porter, you are the father. Congratulations. I'm happy. I'm super happy right now. You look oh. happy. Ms. King, I want to apologize to the way I carry myself throughout all of this. You know what I mean? I can't change the world, but I could change me and how I move and my movement, you know? So, 
At the end of the day, I'm his father, but I'm gonna do more. And I'm gonna step up to the plate more than I'm already doing. Um, I accept your apology, and I knew he was yours. Are you all together now or no? No, we're co-parenting. You're just co-parenting? Yes, okay. So even though you're not a couple anymore, it's important that you all establish trust. And that means, Miss King, for you, telling the truth. A lie cannot be your go-to when things don't go the way you planned or the way you want or the way you think. So then I tell a lie to try to manipulate the situation. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You see what all the lies cost, right? Yes. Kylin is three and he probably would have had even a closer relationship with his father had you just been truthful from the beginning about everything, okay? All right, I want you all to take the advantage of the counseling and the resources we have for you. Dr. Jeff will be standing by to answer your questions and give you some great tips on how to co-parent and be the parent Kylan deserves. I wish you all the very best. He's adorable. Thank you. Court is adjourned. Thank you, doctor.